Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how you can create some simple text and extrude it inside of FreeCAD. This is often useful if you want to add text to some of your projects or if you're looking to get into CNC machining and you want to do some 3D carving. So let's have a look. So we've opened FreeCAD here, we're in our start workbench. First thing we're going to do, create a new part and then we're going to switch to the part design workbench, create a new body, come over to our model tab, as always create a new sketch select our XY plane, OK, close. For this tutorial, I'm also going to make use of my parametric modeling because it's powerful and you'll see at the end why it's so useful. So we'll go up to our workbench, select spreadsheet, come up to the top here, create new spreadsheet. Inside the component tree, we're going to right click, rename, we'll call this parameters. Now if we double click on our spreadsheet, I'm just going to enter three parameters here, shouldn't take a second. So the first one we've got length, then we've got width, and finally height. So for length here we're just going to use 35, width is going to be 12, and height is going to be 5. Now remember we need to activate the components, so we want to right click, properties, our unit is going to be millimeters, and our alias for this will be length. We do the exact same for the other two. Our alias for this one is obviously width. And finally, we want to do units of millimeters. And our alias will be height. Hit OK. They all turn yellow, which means they're active. And now we can just close out of this. So on the bottom here, remember, we've got tabs. So we just want to click our text tab, which will take us back to this workspace. Let's go into body. Remember, we created a sketch before. We want to double click on the sketch. What I'll do for this tutorial is I'll just create a simple rectangle that we're going to extrude. You can think of this as any part or even a plaque for something like CNC machining. So we're going to go up, grab the rectangle tool. And remember, we need to select a point of reference. So in this case, that's going to be the origin of the workspace. So hover over that and click. Then we're just going to drag out a simple rectangle shape. We're going to add in our parameters, so we're going to go up to the constraints menu. I'm going to select the vertical distance constraint, select two of our vertical points, and uh, remember we can do a parameter. In this case, I'm going to do parameters dot width. That was 12, and we want to grab our horizontal tool this time, select two points, and in this case, we want length. And there we go, we've got a simple rectangle. So we're done with the sketch, we can hit close, come back to the model tab. Now with our sketch selected here in the, in the component tree, we want to grab the pad tool. So make sure you're in the part design workbench. Grab the pad tool. Remember we set a height parameter as well. So we're going to click on this. We're going to do parameters dot height, hit OK. OK again, and there we go, we've got a simple rectangle. Next thing we're going to do is add some text, and in order to do that we need to use a new workbench. So let's go up to the drop down here and select draft, which is the third one down. In here, what we'll use to create the text is this tool up here, it's one of the yellow symbols, and it says create text string in shapes. So we're going to hit that. Now just to give you a bit of an overview here, um, in something like Fusion 360 what you do is you use a sketch to do your text. But in FreeCAD you can't really do that. You can convert a draft to a sketch, but it doesn't work very well because it loses its constraints. So in here we just have to do it in the draft workspace and work with that. So that's what we're going to do. Once you've selected your string tool, you'll need to select a point of reference. And remember to create this rectangle, we use the origin of the workspace as a reference. And we should do the same here. So we can just zoom into the bottom left corner and select that. Sometimes it's really tricky to select the corner exactly, but if you can, if you look up on the menu here on the left, you can just do it with numbers. So we know the X, Y origin is coordinate zero, zero. So you can just enter zero mil, zero mil in there, and Z is gonna be five. Sometimes it changes this when you hit okay, which is a bit weird, but we can fix it if it does that. So our height in this case is gonna be 10. Um, our string is gonna be the text that we wanna display. In this case, that's gonna be subscribe. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe, hit that big red button. It helps the channel out a lot and you'll be notified about my new videos. Next thing we'll have to do is select our font. If you hit this button here with the three dots, you'll see that it's going to ask you for a directory for your fonts. 
Now typically on a Windows machine, your fonts will be located in this directory here, which is C slash Windows slash fonts. So you can try and navigate to that and select it. In my case, it wouldn't let me do that because it said I didn't have um, administrator permissions, which I do. Don't know why but what you can do to avoid that issue if you run into that problem and it won't let you select this directory what i did was just highlight all your fonts copy them out and you can just paste them into a separate directory so on a separate drive i've created this folder here called my fonts pasted them all in and now in FreeCAD, i can just select that directory with no issues so what we'll do again we'll hit that button with the three dots in my case my font folder is on this drive and for the tutorial, I'm just going to use the Arial font and hit open. And you'll see in that little box now that we've got a path to the font that we're going to use. And notice what I said before, how it changes the X and Y. Notice as I selected the font, it did change those. So let's go and change them back. We just want 0, 0, and our Z height is 5. So hit OK. You can see what it's done there is it's placed the text using the reference to the origin on top of our block. Now there's a few things we're going to fix. Obviously the text is too big. So what we can do is we can go and change the size. But one problem you might run into in FreeCAD and you might have seen this already is notice in the bottom left here I've got these properties. If I click on size and I go to change that to say 5 and then I hit enter nothing happens. No changes have been made. But what you have to do is you have to change it. So I'm going to select say um, 7 and you have to hit tab on the keyboard for it to update. So if I hit tab, notice it changes. Bit of a weird one, but you just have to hit tab and it applies the changes. In this case, I'm going to probably go for five. So remember, hit tab makes the changes for us. Remember again, under our position property, we have this Z position variable. This represents the height of our block. Now we don't want this to just be a floating variable. We want it to be a parameter. Because if we change the height of our block, we want it to update in real time. So again, we can use our height parameter here. So we're going to do parameters.height. Hit enter. OK. That has set that up for us. And now if we change the height of the block, it'll change with it. Now this next part is a little bit fiddly and it took me a while to kind of work this out in FreeCAD. But because we're not using a sketch to do this, it's really hard to position your text accurately because you don't have access to constraints so like we did before in our original sketch you can use constraints and create dimensions and positions so that FreeCAD knows where everything is well in the case of a draft you cannot really do that effectively so we're going to have to use the measurement tool which is good to learn about to find out the length of our text and then use our parametric modeling effectively with that. You'll see what I mean in a second because we want to get this text centered in the middle of this block. You can do this pretty easily by going back into our properties, go to position and you can just increase this X position and notice it moves around and you could kind of eyeball it and be happy with it. So we could go to Y and just be like, okay, that's good enough. But we know that that's not really good practice and it's something you want to avoid, especially if you're going to change the design in the future. So what we'll do, as I said, we'll use the measurement tool and we can use our parameters to make it automate this for us. So if we click on shape string here in the part tree, up here on the menu, notice this little ruler symbol and it says measure distance. We're gonna click on that and you'll see this little ruler on your cursor. Uh, basically, we're gonna select two points that are the furthest away from each other so we can measure the length of the text. So we're gonna hit the ruler, select our first furthest point here, and once again on the other side. And again, it's gonna be rough. It's not gonna be an exact measurement, which is a shame, but this is one of the best ways I've found to do it. So now if we uh, rotate around, you can see it's added a measurement here, 28.72. That's gonna be the length of our text. And you can see in our part tree, there's a measurement there so that you can easily read it. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the height. So let's grab our measurement tool again. Oh, make sure you click make sure you click shape string first so that it highlights in green then grab the measurement tool i'm going to select the bottom of the b here and then the top that should give us a rough measurement and we can see it's 4.78 so now we can use these measurements to center our text so let's go back to our shape string 
drop down into the position properties down in the bottom left and notice we've got this x parameter now this is currently set to zero at the origin but we can do a little bit of math here and center it up so what we want to do is take the length of this block which we know so let's enter a parameter we'll create a set of brackets inside the brackets we want to do parameters dot length minus the length of our text which in this case is 28.72 and then we're going to come outside the brackets and divide the whole thing by two and that should position our text uh, in the center horizontally so let's hit okay i notice what it's done there for us so that's centered up really nicely we need to do the same now with the the y coordinate so let's go back in here use our parameter so we want a set of brackets inside it we want to do parameters dot width minus the distance of the height which is 4.78 and we're going to divide that whole thing by two and hit OK. And if we go to our top view, you can now see our text is centered up really nicely and it looks great. Once you're done with these distance measurements, you can actually delete them. So you can either delete them or you can hide them. We'll hide them for now. So if we hit space on the keyboard, that'll hide the two of those. And we still got our text there in the center. Now, because we used parametric modeling, if we go back to our uh, spreadsheet and let's change these to something random so let's change it to 60 uh, we'll change the width to 22 and we'll change the height to 7 and now let's go back to our model view and look what's happened because we used parameters and because we used measurements it's adjusted everything for us so our height has changed our length has changed and our width has changed. Our text is the same size, but it's kept it all nice and constrained for us. Now, what it won't do is if we go back to shape string, if we adjust the size of our text, so let's, let's make our text 10, hit the tab, now that won't fix it. And the reason is because we made those manual measurements. In order to reposition this, all you'd have to do is measure this again and update your X and Y parameters here on the property list. Okay, so I've changed everything back to how it was and these are the parameters that we have. We've got 35 length, 12 width, and 5 height. So now we can take a look at trying to extrude or cut this text. So if we go and switch to the part workbench, so we can select our shape string in the part tree. And up on the menu here, there's a symbol called extrude a selected sketch. We're going to hit that and it's going to ask us for a distance to extrude. So we're just going to enter three millimeters for now. Hit OK. I notice what it's done there is it's pulled our text upwards. Uh, we've created an extrusion. Obviously, that looks a little weird at the moment. It's a bit high. So what we can do is over on the component tree, hit extrude. Remember, we can drag this as well up into our part so that it's all nested. Click on extrude. And come down here and you can see our length forward is currently three. So let's try one. Hit tab, remember, to update. And there we go. We've now got a little bit of text on top of a block. You could also use this for CNC to subtract the rest of the block away, leaving only the text. Or you might want to extrude the text into the block, which we can show you now. Now, if we wanted to create a cut here instead of an extrude, what we can do is on the part tree, Click on extrude and hit the space bar. That'll hide that. Make sure that you are still showing your shape string. So your extrude might have hit both. So hit the tab here. Um, make sure you press space on shape string. Once you've done that, we're gonna move over to the part design workbench. Come into the model tab, select our shape string. Up on the menu here, select create a pocket with selected sketch. We're gonna create a cross reference, hit okay. And now it's gonna ask us for a length. So we're gonna lower this back down to one. Hit okay, and you can see now we've created a cut into the block and we've got our text in there. Let's make this look a little better. So we're gonna go and select all the edges of the corners and we'll add a little fill up on there. We've got that one, that one. We can select fill up. We're gonna make that say 2.5. Nah, let's make it two, we'll make it two. Hit okay, and there we go. So there we are guys, that's what we end up with. That's a simple block with some nice centered text using parametric modeling. 
Uh, this has obviously been a really simple example, but you get the idea, you get the workflow. You can now go away, have a play around with this, play around with the parameters. Um, one of the next videos I'll probably work on is how to add text to a curved surface. That's definitely a lot trickier inside a FreeCAD than say some other software platforms. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you want to request a tutorial, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.